It's pie time. Due to some violent content intended for ma ma mature audiences, parental discretion is advised. The following program is closed captioned for the. Yeah, I was eating ass today. <laughs> Oh, there's Nadia. Hold on. I'm coming. Yeah. My camera's coming. Sure do, it do, is. Do, 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 do. There we go. Oh, you still look the same, huh? I guess so. How are you? Ah. <laughs> I literally got down here and turned things on like 30 seconds before we went on. Yeah, I love that. <clears throat> Sorry. Kid stuff. <laughs> Evie's like... I can't blame you. You know, kids ruin everything that's uh, predictable and good about life for the most part. Evie got like this bonkers headache over the last hour. And now she's like, you know, in the infirmary. infirmary and uh, she's like kind of nauseous or something. So migraine and she needs she needs mom oh well yeah for everyone these things needs, everyone needs mom when they're not feeling well unless your mom is eminem's mom in which case you don't need that mom particularly but is she you know, bad mom eminem doesn't turn out how eminem turns out if his, if his mom was like a good mom no his mom was the worst okay fair enough how was your weekend nadia well thor broke through our screen door when he was trying to chase a squirrel so oh that's fun yeah, he's going to have to start mowing lawns or selling feet pics online or something like that. Little S shit. Selling feet? S selling what? Feet pics. Feet pics. What's that? Where are you selling? Oh, pictures of feet. feet. Yeah, feet pics. Yeah, my thing, yeah. my mind was going into like f pig feet and feet pics, something with like a scraper of some sort. <laughs> Yeah, paw picks, Dan. There we go. Chase, huh. There's probably someone that would buy them. Yeah, he tore like the corner of it when he bust through the door. And it was super funny because as he was waiting to be let back in, he started started like pawing at the screen door and then just stuck his head through it like, oh, I can just, oh, okay. I just put my head through here. I just put my head through that. That makes sense. Oh, what, what do you know? <laughs> Dollar 78 said Will Smith just issued an apology to Chris Rock. Yes, we have to get into that. We discussed it ad nauseum at the uh, law firm today. No one agreed with my stance, which was stupid, but whatever. All right, let's get into it. Let's do it. <clears throat> Wait, why, why can't I? And you're wrong. Shut up, Dan. <laughs> We're not in work hours right now, so I can tell you to hush because you're technically not my boss currently. Zip it. Z Zip it. The Will Smith Oscars slap. Make it a marker so we can highlight this for later distribution. Let's Great. go to the tape. Let me pull up the uh, video. This is the uh, one we shared on Twitter and Facebook. I'm sure there's better resolutions by now, but this is one I know that works. So we're going with it. And if you don't like that, fuck you. I mean, sorry. All right. Why isn't this working, bro? Oh, exactly. there it is. Okay. Oh, I, I got it. Do, do, do. Must resize this thing so we can concentrate on just the video. All right. So let's play this sucker. <laughs> crazy so everybody's seen that by now i'm sure yeah pretty much everybody's seen it see this is why he got sent to live with aunt viv and uncle phil in the first place dollar 78 yeah uh rick james charlie murphy i was thinking that too what do the five fingers say to the face slap <laughs> look all kidding aside i put this on twitter um you don't lay your hands on anybody you don't do that that's absolutely unacceptable. It's just, I get it. He's defending his wife, but 
it's not anything that's like worth. I don't think that's worth slapping. Uh, Jody, my wife, has a form of alopecia. You know. Yeah, but she hasn't completely lost all of her hair. Neither has Jada Pinkett Smith. She is bald. She is shaved. Her right, head is shaved. She has hair. Uh, look, she has alopecia, okay? It's not a life-threatening illness. It's not like, you know, she has debilitating bouts of, you know, vomiting and pain every day. You just lose hair. Jody has it. She's lost hair. It sucks, but it's not anything that's like, how dare you? I mean, for a black woman to lose her hair, that actually is a pretty big deal. I, that is, I, I, hair I'm sure is it is. a big thing in the black community. And also, first of all, can we just talk about how fucking irritating comedians are because every time they cross a line which he did cross a line and i don't give a shit what anybody says he crossed a line and then was like but that's my job and it's like okay and you got hit in the face so i despise comedians i really have stopped caring about comedians i've stopped having really any respect for them because they hide under this guise of being the funny guy and they think anything goes because it's their job to be an asshole and i don't think it's cute to be a professional asshole i really don't um and he also shit on her in front of you know thousands this wasn't a roast this was not a roast of jada pinkett smith this was the oscars he could have said anything else i would have hit him i'm fine with will smith hitting him i'd have hit him no I mean, you, like, whatever you say about comedians, that's fine. But you don't, you don't go on stage and hit the fucking comedian, right? I wouldn't. Hit, I wouldn't. I don't think it was the best choice of action. Dollars just subscribe. Thank you. Uh, we talked about this at the office today. I don't think it was the best course of action for Will Smith. I'll say that he's going to lose like a lot of professional credibility, whatever. But I would have absolutely hit him like if it was a regular scenario now do, was will smith right no do i agree with him yes <laughs> like am i okay being in the wrong i am we live I in am. a society we live in a society where we have freedom of speech chris rock can say whatever the fuck he wants to say um and he'll face repercussions whether professionally or through the oscars or the academy or the community in Hollywood will shun him, whatever. But you can't lay your hands on somebody unless you're in self-defense. But why are people so okay with throwing around, being insulting, you know, being inflammatory, and then they get hit and everyone's like, oh, no. Oh. You threw the first punch, whether that be physical or metaphorical or symbolic. Whatever. There's a difference. And you got popped in the face. Those are mutually exclusive. <laughs> physical, metaphorical, throwing the first punch. Those are different. You can't lay your hands on somebody. You just cannot. We have rules for that. You get arrested for that. You don't get arrested for saying, hey, your wife's a bald bitch. That's called, um, no, it's actually called harassment if it's meant to annoy or intimidate or whatever. That's called harassment. That's what yeah. that is. Yeah, but you can. We you have can, rules against that too. We can equivocate on that point, but you can't equivocate on somebody coming up and slapping and or punching somebody. There is no gray area there. There was physical harm, bodily harm committed. That is cut and dry, right? So Will Smith will get a fine and he'll pay the fine because he's Will Smith. And then what'll happen? Nothing. Nothing, <laughs> nothing will happen, ha no. Nothing will happen. I don't really. He, and I, I think. Just, and like we were talking about at the office today and the other attorney, Keith, who is similar to me, he wakes up and chews violence every day. And that's why we're friends. Um, choose what? He wakes up and chooses violence every day. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but we were talking to Dan and um dan said so rich people are allowed to be violent yeah dan rich people can do whatever they want they pay the fine they move and, on and that's a whole nother thing <laughs> and i'd like to come back thing. i'd like to come back to that point in a little bit but, but go like, ahead okay, go ahead if somebody you know approached your child approached your wife and said something so horrendous right so insulting to mabel or to evie or to jody and you're standing right there and they say something horrific you're not gonna go Oh, well, that hurt my feelings. No, well, no you're no. going to you're going to like moose up on them and juice up. You might get in their face, 
But that also is technically like a form of violence is getting in someone's face and screaming at them. So what's worse, getting in their face, screaming at them or slapping and or punching them? I would say punching and slapping. Which one's going to end it faster? (laughs) Which one's which one's going to get you thrown in jail as the slapper? Right. But it's worth it. But here's the thing. A, we don't know. Chris Rock knows that she has alopecia. She had hair on. She has a buzzed haircut. Now, I couldn't see all the way around her head. Maybe she's got some bald patches here and there. Or maybe she had some, like, you know, some coloring sponging to make it look like she has hair. I don't know, but it looked like she had hair. He might not know that she has alopecia. And, you know, I think the way you handle that as Will Smith, I think it would have been better if he'd gone on stage right in the middle of this joke, grabbed the mic and said, Motherfucker, my wife is bald because she has alopecia. I don't appreciate that joke. And then hand the mic back and walk back to his seat. He would have gotten so much respect. He would have made his point. Chris Rock would have looked even more like an asshole. True. I think that's that's the way to handle that. Like if somebody yelled some wretched shit at my kid, you know, your kid's a fucking retard. I would go up to him and be like, my kid is intellectually disabled. And I would go through all the things that we've done for her and the struggles we go through. And I'd tell him now, you tell me how you think about that kid now. Oh, my God. I feel like you would hit him. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know you so I, well. And you'd, be, and you'd be like, all right, well, first of all, and you'd be like looking at the notes like, nope. Bam. <laughs> I, you know, I can't say that I wouldn't. <laughs> I but, feel, but here's the thing is, I couldn't fault. Like, if you hit them, yes. Is it bad? Yes. I'm not disagreeing with you on that. I'm not saying like what Will Smith was, what Will Smith did was right. What I'm saying is I get why he did what he did. And let's not forget Will Smith got shit on all last year because Jada was out here banging that like 19 or 20 year old named Augie and everyone was shitting on Will Smith. They're like, he's not a man. How are you not going to like, you know, get your wife? How are you going to let her do this? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And a point comes now where someone throws shade on Jada and Will Smith is realizing this is the time now where I show everybody that I am about my wife. And he uh, went up and if and he went up and he slaps Chris Rock. So so he takes out all that frustration on Chris Rock for yeah. a lame joke that really wasn't that funny and had right. nothing. And it was like it wasn't even about their relationship. He didn't make any jokes about their open relationship and how he's cool with some other guy putting his dick in his wife's mouth, which is yeah. a meme I saw today, by the way, where his face was like totally cool and relaxed when he, you know, you're another yeah. man's dick in your mouth. And then it's the slap picture with him saying, joking about her hair or something like that i feel like if will smith did not dan i already told you i agree with you we already discussed this at the office today yes we have discussed this point one for dan i agree with him on something write it down in the anal annals annals of history whatever the word (laughs) write it in the annals write it in the annals of history okay but real quick Um, cheese danish said that was in the top five slaps yes it was a great slap Shay said often what you can say you would do and what is done in the heat of the moment are completely opposite. Absolutely. Um, yeah, but, but you I know, think had Will Smith not gotten all the shit that he got last year, I don't think he would have responded in this way. I don't know about that. I'm, I'm, I'm theorizing there's something else going on here. Like there's a history and mm-hmm. I'm sure everybody's digging up all the jokes that Chris Rock's made, you know, even close to Will Smith to see if there was something he said, you know, back in the day. Um, I think there might be something underlying that we don't know about. You know, maybe, I don't, yeah. I'm throwing out there, maybe Chris Rock hit on Jada while they were open. Maybe he did a, a, a joke that Will thought was, you know, beyond the pale. I don't know. I, I think there's something more there because I, I, I didn't think that was that bad of a dig. It wasn't like a real mean, like if you go to a roast, those are some fucking like sometimes, Oh, this is cringeworthy stuff. But you're she had, up for that. She had short hair and he made a, it sounded like it wasn't even rehearsed like a, Oh, GI Jane too. Not yeah. the best joke. I think he just something about this joke. And there's something there. 
I think there's something there. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Lupita Nyong'o's reaction. <laughs> the woman behind Smith, Dallas said, was a perfect reaction for everyone where she like kind of smiles at first and then she's like, Oh. Yeah. Well, that's because everybody, everybody thought this was a bit and yeah. right there, you can see it. Cause I'm, I got it She's replaying like... right there. Like the halfway through his first, keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. Everybody's like, wait, I don't, I don't know if this is a bit. <laughs> now here's the like, thing. Ah, here's the thing. Ah. Is, do you, is there any possibility this was a thing concocted by Chris Rock and Will Smith? Because. Oh I don't think so either, but if something, if there's a, a trailer for a movie coming out in two months with Will Smith and Chris Rock, you know that this is right. fake, right? Dallas said, apparently Rock made a bunch of jokes about Jada from back in 2016 at the Oscars. So this could have been building. Uh, yeah, it, that's kind of weird. But you're a uh, celebrity. He's a celebrity. If it's that big of an issue, you reach out to him. You know, you handle this in private. Yeah, but so what he was going to wait till Chris Rock was up there. That almost kind of theorizes that he was going to do slash say something when Chris Rock was presenting for the best documentary, you know, like oh, he, was it for best documentary. Yeah, it was something like that. But Shay said, I, if someone came at my daughter, I can say I may attempt to be a decent human being, but it is highly possible that there will be hands thrown. 100%. And look, we can we can throw these scenarios around all day long you know oh if somebody says something about my kid or my wife every situation is different i think focusing on this specific scenario is probably the most important because it's not it's not cut and dry and there's not a one size fits all right for this sort of thing there's going to be times when you're going to have to defend maybe physically your wife kid loved ones whatever i think in this instance i think will smith was wrong I think he handled it wrong. I think he could, there's a, about five different ways he could have handled it. And I, I think he's lucky he didn't get arrested. I mean, I think I, I heard the Oscar producers were backstage, like sweating about whether or not they should have him escorted out of the building. Well, Chris Rock, the LAPD, like contacted Chris Rock and asked if he wanted to press charges. He said, no, no, he's not. I don't think nothing good's going to come out of that he'll just look no. like an asshole no, you know? rich guys fighting about <laughs> rich guy stuff yeah nobody really cares and that's the other thing like if this happens at any other office building or some company's award show somebody's getting arrested oh, right yeah. but it's different when it's a couple rich guys at the oscars you know <laughs> i just love how he hits them and then walks just just saunters off. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I agree with you in that it was wrong and he shouldn't have done it, but, but I don't care. <laughs> like, I understand morally why it's wrong. I get it. You don't put your hands on people. I understand that. Like everyone at the office was like, so you think it's okay to hit people? I was like, no, but also yes. Like, I don't know. I just do. You, you're kind <laughs> of, you're within two seconds, completely nullifying your first point. Because I, understand why people are upset you don't put your hands on people whatever fine but i think in this instance it was you know i don't want to say justified but i get it and i'm not like will smith is terrible eh. I'm just like, and yeah, also no. also will smith he's got about a foot on chris rock maybe 80 pounds on him 100 pounds yeah yeah maybe i mean hmm you kind of said, I understand. Dan said, I understand why people rob banks. It's still wrong. Oh, I don't necessarily think that like stealing is wrong either. I don't really give. But a what shit. if they're stealing money because they need to buy food for their kid? Exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I don't really give a shit. You do you. If I see someone steal from the Walmart checkout, you know what I'm saying? Not a goddamn thing. I'm gonna mind my business, and that's what I'm doing with this. I'm gonna say, I'm t I'm Team Will on this. I think Chris Rock was low key kind of a little bitch. Should he have gotten hit in the face? No, but he did. And bippity boppity boop. That's what happened. <laughs> I can say without a doubt, I am team Chris. And I don't think what he did was that egregious. My mom was like, well, Smith was wrong. I was like, I don't know who you're talking to. First of all, woman, I've seen you lay hands on people. I don't want to 
to hear it. I know your mom is like, that's her you first like, reaction. What yeah, do you mean? You what do you mean you don't have mustard? <laughs> Slap. You've been laying hands on me since I was seven years old. Now you're going to come out and say Will Smith hit and Chris Rock was wrong for talking shit about his wife when you'd hit us for getting math problems wrong. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> we, uh, I don't understand your logic here. The poll on our Instagram, uh, are you team Will Smith or team Chris Rock? 75% are team Will. 75% of those might have been me. Just as possible. Can you vote multiple times? No, but I may have voted as me and I may have voted as the show. <laughs> so, oh, there you go. So um, a side note, you know, he actually won Will Smith, what, uh, less than a half hour later, won Best Actor and got up there and apologized to the Academy and, you know. And he he kind of wrapped, he tried to wrap it all around in love. It makes you do crazy things or something. And that just sounds like, you know, the guy who's being hauled away by the cops going, I love you, Becky. I love, I did it because I love you. Meanwhile, she's got a bloody nose. Yeah, I, uh, well, and if you watch the video from the, when Chris Rock is talking to Jada, you can tell she's like super annoyed and she's not having it. And Will Smith kind of laughs. And then he must realize Jada does yeah. not think this is funny at all. Yeah. Not even I, a little bit. I saw that noted and I, I've going back, I watched it too. Like immediately he made that joke. They cut to her and she was like rolling her eyes yeah. and he, Will, Will was laughing. Uh, and then soon after that, he goes up on stage. I didn't see his yeah. face change, but at some point he's probably like, ha, ha, ha. I looked at Jada's like, Oh shit. You asshole. You know, he was like, now I gotta go. <laughs> so he, uh, Will Smith, apologized as somebody pointed out in the chat to Chris Rock. He said, quote, I would like to publicly apologize to you, Chris. I was out of line and I was wrong. I'm embarrassed and my actions are not indicative of the man I want to be. There's no place for violence in a world of love and kindness. Everyone watching around the world, I'm a work in progress. He concluded his statement. Da, 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 da. Oh, see, look at him admitting it. Now, if only half the guys in the NFL would do that, that would be interesting. I know, right? It just derailed the whole show. Uh, Questlove won an Oscar minutes later. People aren't even talking about his incredible speech. Yeah, that was really the... Tyler woke me up for this shit. I was asleep, <sighs> snoozing, midnight. And you know Tyler has a terrible habit of waking me up for dumb shit. Dumb shit. And he gets in bed and he was like... <laughs> Nadia. And I was like, fuck, what? He was like, Will Smith hit Chris Rock. And I was like, huh? I said, <laughs> go that. on. I said, let me go ahead and check my phone right now. Yes, Lord. That was the only time Tyler ever woke me up for something interesting. Dallas 78 said, didn't Will Smith do a bunch of training for his Ali movie too? Yeah, I'll bet he did. That could have been bad, but maybe that's why he open hand slapped him. And by the way, What's more embarrassing, slapping a man or punching him? I don't think slapping a man's very embarrassing. I think that it is. That looked like a good slap. That looked like a good slap. But I feel like if it was a punch, and that was the other thing is like, he did not know how Chris Rock was going to react. If he would have hit Chris Rock and Chris Rock would have hit him back, this would have been a whole nother thing because it would have just been a full on brawl at the Oscars. Oh God, I would have loved it. This is the most fun the Oscars has ever been. I swear to God. What's interesting is I read Denzel said to Will Smith, like, the devil comes at you when you're on top. Yeah, at your highest point. That's when at your you highest double. point. And I was thinking, but wasn't Will Smith's highest point like 1998? No. He Wouldn't he have come then? Huh? <laughs> Maybe the devil's just been sitting there like, wait for it. Yeah, he's wait like, mm, I'll wait till he's all like oscar -y. and Then we'll come after him. Yeah, because the devil in the 90s was like, I could, but like I feel like he's going to do more stuff. So let me just wait and let me actually see what Conor McGregor is doing. So the next question is, what are these two going to do now? Like, there's got to be something. Their PR people are probably like, you need to do a charity thing, you know, where you both do this, or maybe they do like a sit down interview with Oprah or something, you know, I bet they're what's, gonna do what's, a what's going to come of this. What's going to come oh. of this. So Jada Pinkett Smith has a uh, series Podcast. called 
podcast called like Red Table Talk. And she has people on, they talk about like real life shit. She, you know, and Willow's there with her sometimes too. But, you know, they they talk to celebrities and are going through it. And so I bet you, I bet you any amount of money, I'm going to bet $37 though, because that's all I have, that they're going to do a, um, a red table talk probably. Come well, on. with uh, Chris Rock and Will there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, something's going to come of this. This isn't going to be it. You know, it's not going to be Will Smith apologizes and that's that. There's going to be, at the very least, they're going to be co-hosting next year's Oscars or, you know, co-presenting an award at next year's Oscars, right? That That's the very least. Probably more than that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't either. But anyway, so, uh, yeah, we I think we all agree Will Smith was wrong. Moving on. <laughs> I wake up and I choose violence every day. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, Dan said Chris Rock wearing a helmet. That would be funny if they co-hosted next year and Chris Rock went up there wearing a helmet. That would be delightful. I would Some, laugh. Yeah, there's going to be something happening with this. This won't be the end of it. It's too big of a story and too many people are talking about it. Uh, Hard Knocks is coming back. The HBO show featuring a uh, following a training camp for an NFL team will be featuring the Detroit Lions. Oh. Oh. It's always like a team that's kind of, you know, mm. get the I've Raiders. Never watched, never watched Hard Knocks. Don't know. You just explain what it is. No idea what it was before that. No clue. Zero interest. It's interesting to watch. If you're an NFL fan, it's interesting to see the behind the scenes. You know, they show them in the meeting rooms and they have the team meetings and the rookies have to do the, you know, the, uh, you know, the little song and dance to, you know, be initiated, da, 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 da. And, you know, you and to watch the process because they have a camera in the GM and, head coach's office when they tell guys that they're cut and that's interesting oh okay so i didn't know we were out here shattering dreams i'll watch <laughs> there's a little bit of that but you know there's also stuff like uh you know they have a storyline going where this rookie yeah. you know he's uh you know he's been battling drugs and he's clean and sober and uh, you know he's doing better and you know shit like that right there is a, okay, well, if you love that show, you're going to love the Dallas Cowboys cheerleader show because it's similar to that, but it's girls in short shorts and their their boobs hiked up to the heavens. And it's similar where they pull them into the office and they're like, Kara Ray, now we knew that your kids, they could be better, okay? So Kara Ray, it's not going to work out for you this year, okay? And then they'll call in um, Misty Ann, now Misty. And they always have two first names because it's the South, right? They all got two first names. Misty Ann, Ray Ann, Sheila Ann. <laughs> I don't have. I really crack myself up. I really do. I don't. I don't have any kind of desire to watch some 58 year old former cheerleader with a twang yelling at some 23 year old cheerleader that you need to tighten it up tiffany this yeah, ain't gonna cut it you know I, that's I have exactly no, how she sounds <laughs> yeah i don't i have no desire to watch that and also i don't i don't want to see any kind of like glorification and really serious presentation of fucking cheerleading you know it's ridiculous My my favorites are when there's a legacy, which means their her mom has cheered on the team before. And the coach is like, now I cheered with Paula Ann's mother back in the 80s. And let me tell you, Paula Ann is not her mother. <laughs> Paula Ann is not as talented as Laura Ann ever was. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, if they were to do, if they were to have the Detroit Lions, if they were to have hard knocks and there was going to be some old guy with the Southern twang yelling at them, I would absolutely watch it. Do they have one of those? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I when just does know it start. I want to watch it now. What hard knocks? Yeah. It'd be like August. Oh, okay. Cause training camp opens like August 5th or something. And then they start filming when they open and. 
but you know, they usually cut an episode together after a week. Do you know what would be so fucking funny is if the makers of Hard Knocks and the makers of the Dallas Cowboys cheerleader show let the coaches like switch. So you had the dance coach teaching the football players, like commenting on their stuff, and you had the football coach yelling at the cheerleaders. <laughs> hmm. I can sense that you're doing something else and not paying attention to the hilarious thing. No, no. Was- <laughs> But just know it was hilarious. Oh, Chris Rock just issued an apology too. Dollar seventy eight on top of this. Jesus, like a live Twitter over here. Yeah. Well, let me find Chris Rock's apology, and then we'll go to uh, we'll go to the uh, what the hell stupid news. His, mid- <sighs> his middle name is Julius. <laughs> oh, I like that. I don't see the. Yeah, I don't see it yet either. Did I look for? Yeah, I looked for Chris Rock. Yeah, I didn't find it. I oh, didn't see that, it, Dallas. That that that's gonna be a meme forever, right? Like Chris oh, Rock. 100%. Chris Rock is now officially in the top ten categories of memes. But you know what? He I was surprised at how well he absorbed that hit. Yeah, he took it like a man and just kind of kept going. There yeah, was no I, like. He didn't flare up like, "What the fuck did you do, you mother?" You know. He probably like Will Smith hit him and he was probably like, fair. Okay. Yeah. No, that makes sense. <laughs> Maybe he, I do like his line. Uh, Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. I know. It, 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 that's exactly what made me think it was a joke at first. He might. And I wonder if he hit him with like a Hollywood slap, you know? Mm, yeah, perhaps. Oh, I hope this isn't some PR stunt as real as it seemed. And in the moment, I hope it isn't a real PR thing. Like if they come out in a month and it's like the new Will Smith, Chris Rock show star on E. And I'm going to be like, fuck it. I'm not going to believe anything anymore. Fuck you, celebrities. Yeah, they're all just in one big. Because guess what? He looked really mad, Will Smith. But guess what? He's an actor. He knows how to act like he's really mad. So, yeah, I don't see the Chris Rock apology. You ready to do stupid news? Sorry, it's just a stupid little button here. Stupid okay. news. Stupid news. Stupid news. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7.30 Central Time. What's going on, Adia? We're going to change the passport ready. We're going, going where? We're going to Japan, Japan. Japan. Yes, where weird shit is happening. Okay. So the Board of Education for this school announced uh, about eh, about two weeks ago that a 51 year old teacher at a public junior high school has been suspended for three months for repeated inappropriate behavior. Now, you hear that and you're like, oh, gross, you know, sexual harassment, bippy boppy boop. But it's weirder than that. Um, He was impulsively putting his colleague's toothbrush into his mouth. Now, let me give you the background on this story here. So the instructor visited a school nurse's office 30 times. So he goes to school nurses, a grown ass man, a teacher, goes to the nurse's office between early September and late November, each time at like five in the morning, he goes into this nurse's office and he would go through the room's desks and drawers, putting the, putting the nurse's toothbrush in his mouth, like 20 separate times. Super weird. And the school nurse noticed something was wrong because she'd get to work and be like, why is this toothbrush wet? That's weird. So she set up a video camera in one of the rooms and it captured the guy going in there and putting her toothbrush in his mouth. And he said, I got carried away with an impulse to put someone's toothbrush into my mouth. I felt close to the nursing teacher. Ah, hell no. Ah. Ah, so he had a crush ah, on her and that's his way of getting closer is to, and why is her toothbrush at work? Well, okay. It says the nursing teeth. Yeah. It says like the nursing station. So I don't know if, you know, if she gets there super early or has to stay super late or, you know, uh, or some people too, like I have a toothbrush in my car and like floss and stuff just in case. I don't know. So maybe teachers after lunch, this, this uh, school nurse, you know, wants to brush her teeth or whatever after lunch. But this creepy guy went looking for her toothbrush. Ah. Such a weird, specific thing, right? 
Yeah. Like, and, like if if he were if he was caught sniffing her coat, you know, that's that's creepy. But that's not like I want your toothbrush in my mouth. Yeah, the toothbrush in the that's so because oh. it would almost be less weird if he like stole her underwear, right? Because that's kind of Ew. like common perverted stuff to do. I picture him going through the trash and pulling her dental floss out and going like uh, exactly. wrapping it around his like, tongue. It's just so He's much like, uh. Mongo said that's when you rub the toothbrush all over a habanero and put it back in the drawer. Oh, he'd probably like that, Mongo. No, you like, put that. You put I that toothbrush in your you butt. In yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd, he'd like that even more. I don't know if he would. It sounds like He's, he just wants to be like kissing her and stuff. Said he felt close to her. Ain't nothing closer to somebody than eating ass. This is true. I do need to see if <laughs> I do need to see a picture of the school nurse. Yeah, I don't know. They don't have one. Uh, the link from Reddit did not have a uh, a photo attached to it and probably because they want to you know respect her privacy there was some creepy guy you know sticking her toothbrush in his mouth repeatedly for several months which is weird if someone were to like break into like if i had an office someone broke into my office i would rather have them just steal shit don't be licking my stuff <laughs> yeah just steal i just steal money i don't because then everything feels unclean if i found out someone was like licking my coffee mug dan or you know like <laughs> licking my toothbrush i just feel Jeez. like there nothing ever would be clean again yeah that's uh that's a whole other thing kind of uh made me think of it was d have you ever used somebody else's toothbrush no no nope, absolutely right? not refuse yeah. disgusting do you watch what is that show extreme cheapskates mm, I, i've heard of it i don't think it's I've on tlc there's this couple, and it was from like the early 2000s, I think, who shared floss, like one would floss their teeth and then give the wet, soggy floss to the next person, to the, to the husband or the wife, whoever, you know, was flossing second. They shared the same toothbrush. Like it just, there's something of, like kissing. I'm fine with kissing, but there's something about. Yeah. I don't know what it is. No, know nobody is. knows what it is, but universally, nobody wants to use anybody else's toothbrush. Mm -mm. That Even if you've been married to somebody for 30 years, shit, that might even make it worse. Because <laughs> you know what they do with their mouth. Um, eat but, ass. Yeah, eat, eat ass. But there's, uh, yeah, there's no excuse. Like, if I am at, let's say Jody and I are somewhere where I don't have a toothbrush, but she does... I'm just not going to brush my teeth, you know? Nope. I might put my finger in the water and rub it around my teeth or something, but I ain't going to grab her toothbrush. Fuck no. Absolutely what, what, not. It's sort no. of a monster. That's just It's such a weird, like, invasion of privacy, but a toothbrush isn't really private, but it, I mean, it feels like it is. It's so it's weird. I think it's because it combines a couple things. It combines, like, it's intimate but that intimacy is ruined by the fact that that toothbrush has gone through and pulled out chunks of half-eaten food and you know there's probably some plaque and some gingivitis yeah. stank on it or whatever the fuck Dallas yeah. said my wife and i have been together for 23 years and i have not ever used her toothbrush yeah i don't think i've ever used tyler's i think back when tyler and i first started dating um, because I live in the, my sorority house on Drake's campus. Tyler lived downtown, like half a mile from the station. So, like on Thursday, so on Thursday nights, I would spend the night at his house and then I would get up and like go to work on Friday mornings. And, um, I think one time I forgot my toothbrush and I just went to work and like, I think I either put gum in my mouth or gargled Listerine, but I did not brush my teeth. I was not going to use Tyler's fucking toothbrush. It's disgusting. Yeah. No. There's no point in that. It's so, and it's like, what, what? And now you're ruining the point of the toothbrush. You think now you're putting someone else's germs in your mouth. There's got to be like a toothbrush lock, right? Maybe. But I think yeah. most people subscribe to the same thought we do, which is don't, don't, don't do that. Yeah. But if you, you know, if you go to work, I don't know, like somebody said in the chat, you don't have five minutes at home. I guess there's people who don't and they brush your teeth at work. I've seen people do that. At the old station, I'd walk into the men's room very rarely, but once in a while, there'd be somebody in there brushing their teeth. And 
Okay. Well, if they're salespeople, that makes sense. Uh, put some fresh mint gum in or something, you yeah, know? But they like, also have I, those, they also have those throwaway toothbrushes, you know, where it has the shit on it. You just open the yeah. packet and do this. Those don't really do anything though. I'm sure they do much better than going in there with hot garbage dumpster mouth breath. Mm. You know, like you just ate the asshole of a dragon after eating some garbage juice, dumpster juice. Garbage juice. Jeez, that's garbage. stupid. Stupid news coming up again on Wednesday at 7.30. At 7.30. Yes. Precisely. So there's this thing on a subreddit called Relationship Advice. Oh, God damn it. Okay, I can't wait. This guy posted, girlfriend cheated and I have video proof. He wonders what to do with it. Oh. 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 Oh, my dish. little petty wheels are spinning. There's so many things you could do with that. You could invite her and all of her friends and your friends over for a movie night and play it. Or that's good. Or you could. Oh, well, what would you do? You well, let's video evidence. Let's read the story here real quick. Okay. Last night, my girlfriend went out to a club with her friends. We are long distance. And when she returned, she called me. I work Asian shifts, so I am up during the night. She told me that she flirted a little with the friend of a guy her friend was interested in. I didn't like it, but she told me that they didn't exchange numbers or anything. So I was like, whatever. Drunk people do weird stuff. It's nothing too serious. But today morning, a friend of mine sent me a video which shows my girlfriend sitting on the guy's lap and his hands were on her thighs. That's not flirting. It's far removed from that. My girlfriend doesn't know that I have this video. My question is this. Do I just ghost her or have we detailed breakup where there is a potential for tears and drama. I was leaning more towards ghosting, but wanted to ask some advice before acting. See, I thought the video was going to be like making out. I did too, but um, it sounds like this has crossed the line for him. I mean, right. Everyone's got I, there. Yeah. I could see where this is for some people, not that big of a deal. You know, that's where I'd say break up with her because it's long distance. Shit, you're not even like on the same clock long distance. Right. When she's getting lunch, you're fast asleep because you're working Asian hours. You know, so I'd say, you know, it's it's a relationship is tenuous at best when it's long distance. And if you got even kind of the slightest bit of like, well, I don't know if I like that. Chances are it's, it's going to get worse. Yeah. And also he clearly classifies that as cheating yeah and the um the result of cheating is you no longer have a relationship i think that should be the universal standard um but yeah that that fits his definition of what cheating is therefore yeah you got a dumper yeah some people that line may be uh lower you know oh he uh this guy bought her a, a drink at a bar that's that's it i'm over it Done. Yeah, guys like that are bitchy. Mr. Clean Guy, hey, how are you? Dan, it's our friend from the office. Mr. Clean Guy, hello. Christian, Mr. Christian. Hey, yeah. Christian, Mr. Clean Guy 420. Does that mean he smokes weed? What, 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 what? Ooh, no. Not judging, not judging. But yeah, I think you dumped this bitch. I think it's, uh, it's over. You know, this is just like, this is a thread that just came out. And the more you accept this stuff, the more the thread's going to come out. Yeah. I, um, speaking of relationship advice, had an interesting um, scenario that I had witnessed over the weekend, kind of mm, in this same wing of things. Okay. So Tyler and I go to a friend's birthday party and he had recently broken up with a girl he was seeing maybe like a month or two ago. And we go into the party, walk in, and he's on the couch with this woman that he broke up with. And um, he went up to go do something. And so I asked, oh, you know, are you and Sheila back together? And he said, we'll call him Jerry. Jerry said, no. And I said, okay, um, what you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> he said, she texted me and asked what I was doing for my birthday and asked if I was having a party and if she could come. And I was like, Jerry, you didn't think to like tell her no. 
<laughs> because now you got this ex here and she's like rubbing his back and like trying to hold his hand. And I'm like, cause she thinks this is, she thinks this is y'all getting back together. That's what she thinks hmm. this is. So uh, uh, why did you do this? <laughs> why have you done this? Kind of weird, right? Like if you break up with somebody, that, then that's done. You don't like, you don't fuck with them anymore. Right? No. I mean, I, I broke up with Jody back in the day. And yeah, we, we got back together. I know, but did you guys still talk like after you broke up? Well, you know, it was only for like a couple weeks, but no, no, right. we didn't. Yeah. That's what I'm saying is like, I think what Jerry did was even after he dumped Sheila, he was still talking to her like no. regularly. So then she gets this idea like, oh, we're probably going to get back together. Ooh. Yeah, I, maybe there was no clear delineation there between them as far as like the relationship is over. You know, maybe has ceased. Yeah, I mean, and not like you need to like have it notarized or whatever, but it's usually pretty obvious when you break up. But maybe that wasn't the case here. I am a notary if, in case anyone needs a breakup. Yeah, up note. you need to break up. Nadia will get you the seal. I do have a stamp. Well, bam. I think though it's almost healthy to not talk to that person after you break up, at least for a little while. I think in time, you know. Time heals all wounds, the old cliche, but I think in time you'll get back to, you'll find a new relationship with that person. It won't be romantic, but it'll be, you know, oh, you know, she's in my kickboxing class every Tuesday. Or, I think you can have relationships with your exes afterwards. You don't Unless think? Unless y'all have like a child together and you need to talk, you know, she's got to go to dad on the weekend or she's right. got to go to mom on the weekend, whatever. I really don't see, like, I think I talked to my one ex, Luis, maybe once a year. And we dated when we were like 12 until we were like 18 or something. Mm -hmm. So he was like a pretty big part of my life. And I'll check in on him every once in a while because he's still in, in like our small shit hole of a town. But I'm not like, oh, we're friends. <laughs> yeah, me neither. I don't have any we're buddies. <laughs> I don't have any exes that I'm friends with, you know, like, hey, how you doing? You, you want to get coffee? I'm going to be in town. You know, nothing like that. Nope, zero. I want no part of that. I'm trying to think the closest I have is you know, like I'm friends with one on Facebook and, you know, she might post something and I'll throw in a comment, but that's it. You know, I'm. <gasps> You're commenting on her stuff. You're obviously <sighs> having an affair. Dun, dun, dun. <sighs> I'm not actually, I, you know, I might have liked something, but I actually don't know if I've ever commented on any of your shit. I don't even see a lot of her shit. I love you, Jody. Um, <laughs> nah, but I, I, haven't, I don't have any relationships with exes. I just don't. I don't. I feel like affairs would be so much work. I know. Right? I don't know how, I don't know how anybody does. You know, you hear the stories of how, like, this guy had, like, three girls going. I'm like, how do you know that? That's got to be just, complicated. I mean, it might be easier with technology now, but at some point, you're going to slip up, you know? Like, you're going to grab your regular phone instead of your burner phone, and, you know, Donna's going to text you, and, and Cheryl will see it. See, I think it'd be more difficult with technology now because you can track somebody's phone. And this is real easy. You know, if they leave their Snapchat location on whatever, if they yeah. share the location with you, it's so easy. But yeah, you, you'll hear, you know, John, the mayor of whatever fucking town and a wife and, and wife and child. But he also would fly on the weekends to Indiana to see his other wife and child. And it's like, God damn it. That's... That takes so much brain power. I'm exhausted for you. That's next level shit. That is uh, when Moose was a pimp. <laughs> but he um, was he still? Is. That's next level stuff. Where you know, I don't know. That's you need like assistance and a whole gaggle of people, uh, posse to help you with that. I would think. But I mean, it's hard yeah. enough doing being a single person and having three girlfriends or whatever. But to have like. You know, your wife and family over here, then a whole nother secret wife and family over there. Jesus, I don't know. 
I yeah, can do it. Like, there's no way the sex is that good. There's no, there's no way. Uh uh-uh, uh, you better That's, just pick one. And it's twice the headaches. <laughs> Right, honestly, God, you got to leave your house to go to another house to deal with more kids. Why? What I know. is the point? Why I'm are leaving, we here? I'm leaving my house, and there's certain joy in leaving these people behind. Right. Being by it's, myself. Hey, Lynn Phoenix. Hi. How are you? What's up, Mitchell? What's up, bro? What's up? But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, what were we talking about? Affairs. Ah, right. Oh, right. Anybody had affairs? Let us know in the chat. Or anybody been affaired on? I think that's yeah. a verb. It is now. Cheated on. I mean, yeah. But back yeah. to the original uh, guy here. You think he should uh, break up with a girl or a ghost her? It sounds like he wants to break up with her, but he just, like, ghosting to me is kind of like the poor man's way of breaking up. Yeah. It's the, uh, it's the spina bifida of breaking up with somebody. I don't think you know what that word means. Uh, I don't know. You have no spine. Spina bifida is like a disease. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. All right. <laughs> Wait, you going to slap me? You going to slap me now? I was thinking about it. Yeah. Spina bifida is like a degenerative disease and you can't walk. You're it's in your doing. spine though, right? Well, yeah. Yeah. But it's like you have so, a spine. So it kind of works, you know? You, no, it does not. You have a I weak spine. No, don't don't try to defend what what you just said. Just say no, that was bad. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Jesus on ice skates. Yeah, anything happened to you this weekend? Well, no. Thor ran through the door. Oh my god, I went for a walk at Easter Lake and I walked around the whole thing all by myself. It was like five and a half miles. I was bored as shit. Is it that big? Yeah. I'm, moose, she's Danish said moose just switched to scoliosis and will accept it. <laughs> okay, sorry. I meant the spineless version of breaking up with somebody. That's ghosting. My there high school go. girlfriend cheated on me. She broke up with me. And when the guy she left me for cheated on her, she tried coming <gasps> back and I said, no, thanks. I know, so right? She, so she dished it out and then it got dished out to her and she was like, oh, I don't like this. <laughs> you know what? What if you... I always wondered, like, if you, let's say you start dating somebody and it's going good, but then you find out they are currently in a relationship, like they are married or they are in a long-term relationship and they want to break up with their current. Oh, so you're the other person. Okay. And then, so they want to break up with their current and be with you. My aunt and uncle did that. Yeah, but my question is, how do you trust them, though? Because they cheated on their spouse to be with you. What makes you think they're not going to cheat on you? Right. Ten viewers poggers. What does that mean? Poggers, it's like a gamer term. Oh, okay. Sweet. Poggers is, poggers is a good thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my aunt, Um. so when he, or my uncle, when he was married to my first aunt, um, you know, things have been going downhill for a long time. And he s- went to this convention or something for work. And that's where he met my new aunt was at this convention for work. Or they worked in the same building and got sent to this convention together, whatever. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, you know, sparks flew, blah, 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 blah. But I think he was like, they did the deed. They banged, had a little affair situation. And he, you know, came clean to his now ex-wife and said, like, hey, look, you're kind of the worst and I don't love you anymore. So, like, divorce? (laughs) Eh? But he's been happily married to my new aunt for, mm, like, six or seven years now. I like her, too. She's cool. All right. Mr. Clean said, I treat my ex-girlfriends like they never existed and it really pisses them off. I mean, how do you do that? You just unfriend them and don't speak to them right yeah like if they're still in the area my ex my my i guess my one substantial ex lives in illinois so i never see him now if i were to see caleb the guy i dated before tyler if i were to see him around i would completely pretend like he did not exist absolutely i would do that all right he's the fucking worst 
Uh, the NFL is going to uh, institute a rule saying that uh, teams must add a minority offensive coach. And they're expanding the Rooney rule to include women. The Rooney rule. That's where uh, <laughs> you have to interview a uh, minority candidate for any mm. head coaching job that opens up. Oh, okay, cool. They have to hire a minority offensive assistant coach for the 2022 season. Part of policy enhancements announced Monday. The coach can be a female or a member of an ethnic or racial minority, uh, according to the NFL owners' annual meeting. Will be paid okay. from a league wide fund. Wow, I can't wait to see all the people complain about how this is somehow unfair to upper middle class white men. I know, right? And kind of uh, this, I think, was probably instigated by the Brian Flores lawsuits. And I read that there's a couple more uh, plaintiffs that are going to join that lawsuit. So we'll, we, we'll see what happens with that. It's a that season seems... for lawsuits. <laughs> get my wink Did yeah okay. oh and speaking of lawsuits um i'm paraphrasing you know the hivey laid off a bunch of people yeah um who was it link phoenix just said he was uh beefing up his resume good idea yeah the uh so you know i text our friend who was let go by hivey last week yeah unceremoniously like 120 other people and the whole thing is like, so there's, there's laws and Lynn Phoenix knows this, I think, um, that, you know, you can't lay off more than X amount of people. You have to give some notice. Like if you're planning to lay off, I want to say 60 or more people, you have to give at least 30 days notice that layoffs are coming. Yeah. But, uh, Hy-Vee didn't do that. And so the legal loophole they've created for themselves is they offered jobs to, executive office people who are laid off in the stores. Okay. So marketing executive number one, who was laid off. Well, uh, you could always work in the Des Moines South side store as a cashier. So that oh technically, God. and, and, and Randy Etiker, I think is his name. He's the CEO of hy He's a real classy piece of shit. It sounds like he said in the video message, and maybe Lynn Phoenix saw it. To employees, essentially, like, if you don't want to work in a store, blah, 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 I find that offensive, you know? So, like, a marketing executive, <laughs> somebody who went to college for four years, right? you know, enjoys doing marketing. That's what they trained, studied, spent their whole career doing. Per laid off employees, he didn't actually offer positions. Yes, I was getting to that. Our friend said he wasn't offered sh jack shit, so... But it's like a marketing executive or, you know, somebody who's in business analyst, whatever. Yeah. You know, oh, I get to work at the meat counter now uh, on the east side Des Moines. That's so nice of you. And take a, take, take a pay cut of about 60%. Oh, cool. Yeah, go work in the floral department. <laughs> and nothing, nothing against those jobs by any means. But, you know, that's not what they trained for. That's not what they spent their whole career doing. Yeah. You know, that's just fucking bullshit. And to say that you're offended, you're offended. I mean, we offered this olive branch of covered in donkey shit. How dare you? My best friend we was, tried not a whole lot even, and you're telling me you don't appreciate it. I know. My best friend was a manager at the Southeast 14th Ivy for several years. That man has some great stories of stuff that happened in that store. I'll bet. I spent two to eight years in college to prep for that job. Yeah, exactly. It's just, well, and it's also, yeah, I would just rather not be offered anything. <laughs> no, that, that's the thing is like, and I said this to Jody, have some balls. If you're going to lay off people, just lay them off. Do but it do the, the right, right way. Thing. Do yeah. it the right way and lay them off. And then you come out like this Randy guy and Tina Potoff, who's the communications person there. They've both not, they've not taken any kind of human, human, humanistic approach to any of this. Sure. You know, like Tina was almost kind of getting a little snippy with Channel 8, but like, well, I don't know where you got your information from, you know, and he's laying out this video where it's like, you don't want to work at a store. I find that offensive. Fuck you. Yeah. You know, no, that's not how you do it. Right. You sit, you come out and you say, I'm sorry, this, this, 
business sometimes is this is the worst part of the job. I take no pleasure in this, you know, blah, blah, blah. We had to do it. I'm sorry. You know, then you slap them all once. Well, then Phoenix says there's a good article about it behind the paywall. Email it to me, Mitchell. Morningmoose at gmail.com. Shay I, said, finally, someone looks worse than Wells Fargo. No, Wells Fargo is still the fucking worst. Don't get me started on that. <laughs> They're the worst because there will be another Wells Fargo thing. It's just a matter of when, not if. It's got to be uh, quarterly. I think we're coming up on the yeah. uh, quarterly Wells Fargo fuck. <laughs> Wells Fargo finds a way to be fucking Satan at about every year or so. Oh, yeah, they do. They do. They're doing Satan's work. <laughs> Yeah, you don't, uh, Lynn Phoenix, send me that article, just the link. I can get behind the paywall so you don't need to give me any, you know, copy and paste or anything. I can get it. But, uh, but Wells gives their employees a 60 day working notice at least. I mean, oh, true, that's nice. right? That's the thing is like, there's things that went down with our, you know, termination that I didn't approve of, but, you know, uh, the GM at the time got on the horn with me and told me, you know, we're not, we're letting you go. And I, I, I don't feel like I got too shafted by that whole process. Now there's other things that we obviously won't get into here, but that were not good, but this was really egregious of high V I think. Yeah. It does not shine brightly for them at all. Yeah. But, uh, I, I don't think this will be the end of that. I think you'll see probably, if not a class action, there will be a couple lawsuits, I think, to come of this. And I hope everyone gets the money they deserve. I do, too. <laughs> or <for> free sure. <laughs> meat. Now, go to Fairway for that. True, they do have a good meat. All right, that's going to do it for us. Um, we should really schedule that, that watch party night. Um, Christian said, send Will Smith to High V to represent the laid off employees. <laughs> Smacking everybody. That's good. You get a smack. You get a slap. Line them up. Here's Randy Edeker. Here's Will. I'm Will Smith. Here's Randy. Exactly. All right. So, yeah, uh, we'll be doing a watch party. I guess uh, if you have any suggestions, hit us up on Twitter um, at Morning Moose Show or uh, email morningmoose at gmail.com. And uh, I think we'll have to actually schedule that out. Probably, oh. I would say a week from Friday sounds good. I have to see if I'm free. I'm super busy. Oh, I gotta poop. Okay, go poop. All right, until uh, Wednesday, uh, we'll have the uh, Am I the Asshole and much more. Until then, thanks for watching. Thanks to you, Ray Ray. God damn it, Rodney. Goodbye. As for Thank me, you, Mitchell. I'm sitting here completely naked after my bath. I'm going to hopefully sleep with the first person I meet. I hope you do the same. You gotta live life, huh? Does that sound good? Great. Good night, Ben. Good night, Moose.